Have you ever wondered what it means to be an INFJ? Have you ever wondered how to know for sure that this is your personality type? Nicknamed the Mystic, the INFJ is one of the rarest types in the Myers-Briggs system. These guys are known for their sharp ideas, warm empathy, and deep understanding of human potential. Today we're going to look at 17 things that most INFJs relate to. Are you related? Let us know. You are fascinated by human psychology. Nothing excites you more than delving into theories or ideas about how people think and respond to life. Understanding people better is one of your biggest goals in life. By nature you are eager to learn more about the human mind, human behavior, coping mechanisms, and more. This interest in psychology is one of the reasons your type is particularly drawn to theories like Myers-Briggs or Enneagram. You like complexity. Want to know how you can tell if you are an INFJ? How deep and complex do you want your thoughts to go? Like INFJ, the whole world is filled with layer upon layer of meaning. Your goal is to go beyond the superficial details of life and delve into the true meaning of life itself. You see life as if you were standing on an abyss, looking down and wanting to see how things connect and unfold. You are deeply empathetic. You tend to absorb the feelings and emotions of those around you. It's not hard for you to change your perspective and imagine how many different people would think of something. This empathy can be both a blessing and a curse. Sometimes it can help you make genuine connections and advise you effectively. At other times, it can feel overwhelming and distressing, especially when you can't tell other people's feelings from your own. Learning is your drug of choice. They seek wisdom more than anything else and are constantly seeking more information on abstract topics and ideas. You can easily forget the facts, but you constantly want to improve and understand better. Taking classes is one of your favorite hobbies, and non-fiction books are probably filling your shelves. You connect with people one-on-one -on -one rather than in large groups. When there are a lot of people around you, it's hard to focus intensely on one person. You like to retreat to a quiet environment where you can really concentrate. You seek depth rather than breadth, so enjoy intimate conversations where a deeper level of understanding and authenticity can be achieved. You can be hard to learn. While you may seem emotionally warm and expressive on the outside, your dreams and greatest ideas in life are often kept inside, where you cherish them. Often this stems from a childhood where you were punished for having bizarre or unrealistic views. This can also happen because it is difficult for you to articulate insights that are often rich, nuanced and complex. Your ideas and insights can be shocking, offbeat, or so abstract that people don't know what to do with them. As a result, you have often learned to internalize them rather than express them openly. You withdraw to protect yourself. Because you take on the emotions and worries of those around you so easily, you are easily hurt or affected by the pain of others. You may go through periods of socialization and then disappear for a long time so that you can process all the emotional breakdown you have received from the outside world quickly see the intentions of others. Since you are more interested in the underlying reasons why people say or do what they do, you can quickly uncover their hidden intentions. For you, the motives and intentions are always clearer than on the surface. Because of this, you often notice good or bad intentions before the person you're talking to is even aware of them. You're a silent cheerleader to your friends. You like to motivate people to be the best they can be through kind and consistent praise and approval. You are very sensitive in the way you deal with other people's feelings and are slow to criticize or micromanage. You think the best way to get someone to do something is to inspire them from the inside instead of pushing them from the outside. I have an awesome fact only for those of you who have made this far, you are awesome, thank you for being here with us. Please consider subscribing and leave a like. Now back to the video. They despise interpersonal conflict. You like to be in a harmonious and peaceful environment and find conflict and criticism very stressful. While some types can split conflict or even enjoy a degree of volatility and debate, it leaves you feeling deeply stressed and unsettled. Even hours after the conflict is over, you sort through what went through your head and try to make sense of it or try to make sure everyone you love is okay. One of the difficulties of being your type is that you can sense other people's feelings so easily that conflict situations can confuse you. You find yourself empathizing with everyone instead of registering how you feel. You may give in a rush to get over the conflict, only to realize that you should have stood up for yourself more. You can be hot and cold when it comes to affection. You enjoy a warm hug from your partner or close friend, but not always. When you are no longer able to socialize or when you are stressed, you tend to have space both physically and emotionally. 
you often end up in the role of counselor. Due to your intuitive and empathic nature, many people find themselves entrusting you with their deepest secrets. You often find yourself recommending siblings, friends, or even adult relatives when they are going through hardships. Although some guys may hate this role, you really feel blessed to be able to tap into your intuitive side and your feelings at the same time. You often feel compelled to improve the lives of others. You see two people in each. You rarely get anything or anyone at face value. You can easily see people's public figures, their outer shell, but most of all you are looking for the core of the individual. You want to understand their motives, intentions, struggles and desires. You have a lively and playful inner world. While on the outside you may seem serious and eager to learn, inside you have a delightful, imaginative and playful inner world. Your thoughts are often mischievous, humorous, controversial, irreverent, and even bold. You enjoy playing with ideas, images, symbols, contexts, theories, metaphors and possibilities. You don't see events as standalone incidents. If something happens, immediately connect it to other related incidents, then map the incident further to see how it will evolve. Your goal is to see the impact of ongoing experiences and actions. Each wave is linked to another wave and then to a main event. Each wave spreads and affects other things. For this reason, you often see the consequences of different actions along with the action itself. You are deeply connected to your dreams. Your mind is constantly synthesizing unconscious information, trying to decipher hidden meanings and abstract concepts. Because Nye INFJs offer a closer relationship to the functioning of what most people call the subconscious, the routine existence of INFJs often take on a type of an amazing quality. For INFJs, there is less of a disparity between their normal waking state and their sleep experience. This can sometimes make it difficult to separate dreams from reality, making nightmares all the more troubling for this guy. When you're stressed, you crave sensory overload or escape. In times of extreme stress, you tend to say, screw it, to the world and all its restraint. You want to eat a whole pizza, spend all the money in your wallet, buy a last-minute ticket to a faraway place, or argue with someone just to rush you. Sometimes you channel that restless energy into something productive like frantic cleaning, hard work, or singing out loud while dancing alone in your room. Thank you for watching, please like the video and subscribe, see you soon.